Welcome everyone! In this video, we are in the Great League showcasing another very powerful team featuring Steelix! Steelix! Easily the most destructive force in the Open Great League right now, and I wanted to try it out as a closer on an ABB style team along with Diggersby completing the double ground ABB backline. Diggersby, very, very good on the safe swap, especially with quick attack, fire punch, very versatile, um, and is there to draw out any fighters or anything that Steelix doesn't want to see. That way, Mantine can come in, take out that hard counter, clearing the way for Steelix to do some Steelix things in the Great League. I've really been wanting to run Mantine, and I knew I had to protect it from any potential lanterns. That's why we've got these two bulky ground types in the back. But here we go. Steelix lead here. Gonna go for a bubble beam. I generally recommend ice beam on Mantine, and if you want to run Mantine, that's what you'll want to run generally. But bubble beam suits my play style and comes in handy a little bit for this matchup ice beam still might be better but i wanted to get off my debuff before they could debuff me so we banking on the fact that most steelix trainers go they, they just throw on alignment meaning they throw right when they get to the move i knew we would win cmp tie so that's why we did what we did there and we're gonna play that same strategy again, looking to CMP tie them, and they have not caught on yet. They're still playing to that CMP tie that they don't win. So we throw with proper timing to get off another bubble beam, then we throw one and then the move. So that was proper timing to catch that. On the diggers B, I generally don't like catching debuffing moves as out of, as a principle in Go Battle League, but sometimes you have to do it, and that's what we did. They meet us with a Gligar here after making that brilliant catch i must say and um this is okay for diggersby we are debuffed which is unfortunate but steelix will force you to do that sometimes and um this is where quick attack fire punch comes and super clutch for these flyers as well as for the grass types guys that's why if you want to safe swap a diggersby that's this is the move set to go with for sure the most versatile uh, move set possible I think as a safe swap that's what you really need and if you don't have a diggersby you can give gfisk a try gfisk would work as an excellent replacement but holy smokes look at the work diggersby is putting in guys almost about to force a shield if they want to hold on to switch they're gonna have to shield this fire punch here and they do and that's from a debuffed diggersby it is an absolute monster so we do get the shield and I want to get ahead on energy with my own steelix so they're likely going to get the shield right back as uh makes perfect sense to go right for that dig they don't want to stick around they get farmed down so they bring back in their own steelix to mirror our steelix and they are not even going to bother building up to the earthquake so um that works out well for us we will just load up here um i think earthquake would be a waste of energy at this point and um definitely some overkill so we're going to go for a breaking swipe of our own and then go for a resisted farm down with these dragon tails. We still have a very healthy Mantine in the back and we can easily swap to debuff or to clear those debuffs. Oh my gosh, they've got a Shadow Vic. Holy smokes. We've only showed Bubble Beam thus far, so they may be thinking we're running Bubble Beam, Ice Beam. We're going for this Aerial Ace and taking out the very annoying Shadow Vic, and that sealed the deal. I think we were going to be fine either way, but that was very, very satisfying. Good game, well played to them. Yeah, it just made perfect sense to pair Mantine with two very strong ground types in the back to protect it from Lantern. But here we go, Frostlass. A bit of a tricky lead for this team, um, but we can do all right uh, with the team effort here. Gonna go for a Bubble Beam debuff here. A lot of bulk and a lot of debuffing action between <laughs> Mantine and Steelix, not gonna lie. We tried to catch a debuffed Avalanche onto Steelix. Steelix can be a very solid safe swap. The only time it can be quite catastrophic is if they happen to have a fairy in the back. But even with something like this here, a meta jam, it can still put in the work. Um, but we are going to play out the zeros as this is generally obviously not good for Steelix. We did get an early debuff off and going to go for another breaking swipe here. 
and we do draw out the fighter. So Diggersby is generally here to draw out the fighter, but we, with a tricky lead like Frostlass, can't safe swap Diggersby onto that, especially with the quick attack fast move. So Steelix is serving that role and drawing out the fighter. So we come in with our Mantine. We're going to farm this thing all the way down. Load up on energy here, and I do ex expect the frost last. There it is. Um, and they do have loaded energy as they did exercise. Brilliant patience hanging on to that energy. And we're going to go for another debuff here because frost last hits like an absolute truck, and uh, they do let that go. So now I think we can uh, easily tank a neutral hitting avalanche, hard hitting yet neutral. So we'll tank this okay with our Mantine. Mantine, quite bulky for those of you who are unaware. And again, if you don't have a Mantine, you can give Pelipper a try. And they are shielding now. Shielding our Bubble Beam there. So it makes me wonder what they have in the back. If it's another counter user, we're in trouble. But I decide to roll the dice, let Mantine go down. It's very low health. And it's not another counter user. It's a Claude Sire. And for those of you who tuned into yesterday's video, you will know Diggersby obviously thoroughly dominates Claude Sire, especially when they're running the Poison Sting version of Claude Sire here. So uh, when you see Poison Sting, um, you can generally um, read that they're running Sludge Bomb Earthquake, which we do see there. And this is tricky. We've got to play this carefully here. We're going to go for the Scorching Sands, um, and they do shield that, that next Scorching Sands. Wouldn't have KO'd, but it would have been effectively ending this match here. And we're going to shield this Earthquake, even though we do live it. What I don't want is to get in an uncomfortable health range where that Frostlass can outpace us to another Avalanche or farm us down. So we go for this Fire Punch. It doesn't KO. I wanted to leave that matchup with a Fire Punch for that Frostlass. I know that they are five off from their next Avalanche, so we can only throw four of our um, Quick Attacks. We do take out the Frostlass, and I think we're fine. I was just being extra cautious. We will survive this Earthquake here because Claude Sire does not hit very hard, and Diggersby is about as bulky as it gets, and we are able to finish this thing off with a Fire Punch. We're saying bye-bye to the Claude Sire, and Diggersby absolutely putting in the work, putting the team on its back to close the game strong. Good game, well played to them. Yeah, this ABB style team was absolutely putting in work in the Great League here. And here we go. Deoxys lead, um, pretty okay. Fairly neutral for Mantine here. We're going to play carefully and eventually look to get out of this matchup. As with ABB, you are swapping out on, of course, losing leads as well as the neutral leads. But we're going to stick in here a little bit, lure them into a false sense of security here, and pick up on their play patterns. They're over farming by one here. So we're picking up on that play pattern. We got a debuff off. We shield up the double super effective Thunderbolt. And now we're going to go for the Aerial Ice after debuffing and actually get some damage in on this DD. And then we're going to throw one and then catch the move onto Diggersby. Reading that they were over farming by one, guys. You got to be reading your opponent and picking up on their play patterns. And that's exactly what we do, allowing us to catch and take no damage on the Diggersby. That's how you get ahead and go Battle League. And they meet, the, meet our Diggersby with a Licky Tongue. So DD lead will almost always have at least the Leaky Tongue in the back. They just pair together beautifully. As for the third, classically it's an Umbreon, could be a Dugong, could also be a Charm A9. Uh, so three variations that uh, you could see there. Maybe even an Alolan Sand Slash as well. That has uh, picked up in popularity as of, as of late, but... This is certainly not a Diggersby answer here. Diggersby uh, quite dominant on Licky Tongue, especially when we're getting these clutch attack drops with the Scorching Sands, allowing us to um, more comfortably tank these super effective power whips. We're just going to overload a bit and go for the Fire Punch. We take out the Licky Tongue there. They come back in with the DD, and because of our over farm, we're able to threaten with the Scorching Sands here. It'll be interesting to see what they want to do. They let that go. Very interesting. So we're going to throw Steelix in to get ahead on energy. And there it is. So it's the Charm Alola Ninetales variation of the Deoxys Licky Tongue Core. So um, what we're going to do, Mantine's still very healthy. We are down a shield. What we want to do here is try and even up the shielding scenario. We built all the way up to the Earthquake. Going to bait with the Breaking Swipe. They shield that. That is huge. And now... 
We're gonna actually go for the EQ. We got that shield. That was our goal. Steelix is on its way out. If they know this, they are going down. We say bye bye to the A9. Holy smokes. That, my friends, are the Steelix things that I was referring to at the beginning of this video. Steelix doing Steelix things. Good game, well played to them. This is definitely one of the bulkier ABB style teams you can run. One of the bulkier teams you can run, period. But here we go, a Lowland Sand Slash. This is going to be the trickiest lead for this entire team. The goal is to get Diggersby somehow on this Alolan Sand Slash, and if it's the classic line with this Alolan Sand Slash lead, the odds of victory are very low. This is one of the one of the few teams that this particular team really struggles against. We are bubble beaming this, taking a little bit of the sting off of these neutral ice punches with stab. It's not a shadow, so that we do have that working in our favor. So we're going to look to go for another bubble beam here and try and get this thing within a manageable health range for either of our two ground types in the back. And we're going to throw Steelix in here. Um, and hope, I'm trying to draw out the Metacham because I'm reading Metacham Azumarill. Um, but they're going to throw some energy here, which is very interesting to see. It's not the classic line, or it could be a variation with Lantern, which we see here in the place of Azumarill. So there could still be a Metacham in the back. But the fact that they would bring that this in onto our Steelix, and we went straight EQ, and of course they shield. The one time I go straight EQ on a Lantern, they shield it. Holy smokes. That was very annoying and likely lost us this game here because that was a massive waste of energy i almost never go straight eq on lantern and they always no shield the breaking swipes uh, so yeah i'm in shambles here that was really annoying oh uh, the one time we go straight for the shield so we throw our diggers be in here i don't know what they're cooking up in the back um trying to get the medi out but it's not medi it's dd so this is much better for diggers be here um, they're forced to go straight uh, Psycho Boost, which of course low severely lowers their attack stat by two stages. This is undoubtedly going to be a Psycho Boost. Everything else would be resisted. It is the Psycho Boost, and we're going to go for another Scorching Sands. And the RNG is also not working in our favor. We're not getting the attack drops. We really... Well, we got it there, so that's good. We get it on the second one, and they're going to take us out with another... Um, psycho boost so knowing that they are now debuffed to the max we're gonna bring steelix in to get ahead on energy maybe aggressive swapping out of that but i didn't i wanted to preserve health on steelix um for that lantern i still can't get over them shielding the earthquake they never shield when you build all the way up to it the one time they do and yeah, like I said, I think that's going to cost us the game. We got a little greedy, decided to divert from the general game plan up against Lantern. I generally just go straight breaking swipe. Um, and that is generally enough to get the job done against the Lantern, especially when you have at least one shield. So yeah, this one's not going to go our way. I think going going for that EQ, risking it, um, a risky play there, um, did not pay out pay off for us i think if we just went straight breaking swipe this is a very winnable game um but yeah we took a chance didn't work out good game well played to them yeah that last one left a bad taste in my mouth i was a bit salty after that one but let's make up for it here with a juicy meta jam lead you'd love to see it if you're mantine they make a play into amanda buzz very interesting i generally don't like pairing man uh meta cham with dark types just because uh, there are a lot of charm a9s lurking and um that's one aba strat that i'm not a fan of so but yeah here we are i digress um that's all beside the point we've got steelix on the man to buzz here that is the alignment diggersby can do okay with quick attack fire punch it's a very tedious matchup but still um generally good for man to buzz so steelix is the way here we tank this. Uh, we have debuffed them once. Going to debuff them again. Steelix quite dominant up against Mandibuzz. And it does win CMP tie in case you're wondering. So you can comfortably play to a CMP tie that you do win there. They uh, aggressive pivot back into the meta champ, perhaps wanting to draw back out our Mantine. And we're okay with that. Um, so they let Medi. They've got Mandy behind it. I don't know what that third could be. 
that's a pretty unconventional core, um, but we're fine. I'm pretty comfortable with our team. We're quite versatile and we're very bulky. So um, when you have those two working in your favor, you can do some amazing things in Pokemon Go Battle League. I'm going to go for the Aerial Ace, take out the Metacham. They just fully let the Metacham go. That is a major obstacle out of the way for our diggers be in the back. And they bring the Mand Mandibuzz back in. They go Aerial Ace because we did get a defense drop, so they're just going to go double Aerial Ace. I think they oh, a, a Dark Pulse uh, plus a Snarl Down would have uh, been better for them energy-wise, but that's okay. We'll take that. And they've got a Reggie in the back, so we're doing okay. We've got loaded energy. We need to grab a shield or do some big damage to the Reggie. Holy smokes, they let that go. That's what we needed up against that Lantern in that previous battle. That was amazing, and now it's Diggersby time. Uh, because they let that Earthquake go, uh, Diggers B will easily clean up this endgame here. No problem. Gonna let this move go, um, even if it is the Focus Blast. We very comfortably tank that, and they can never, ever farm down. They're doing no damage with their lock-ons, and all we need is a Fire Punch here. I forgot that Diggers loses CMP tie to Reggie, um, and we're actually gonna let this go. Um, Steelix can Dragon Tail this thing down. With resisted damage against Steelix doing Steelix things, Dragon Tailing down a bulky Steel type as well as a bulky Flyer like Mandibuzz. You love to see it. Steelix closes the game strong with ease. Good game, well played to them. Oh, this team absolutely puts in work. If you have access to all three, I would highly recommend. But here we go. Uh, Gligar lead. Very good lead for us. Um, we're not running Ice Beam. Ice Beam is very nice for this matchup. We did build up to it, and they look to make a very clutch catch onto an Azumarill. So Mantine on this team is the Azumarill answer. So we're happy to stay right here. And um, they did tank a debuffing move, so we're very comfortable here. The Given the fact that we have to stay in, um, again, Mantine is the Azumarill answer here. So we're just going to go straight Aerial Ace from here on out. We will shield one of these moves here. They did build up to the play rough, so they're likely running Hydro Pump play rough. Um, and we're just going to go for another Aerial Ace here. A straight Aerial Ace until the Azu is gone. That's the name of the game here in this mid-game matchup. Going to go for yet another one again until it is gone. So Mantine, quite bulky. We have debuffed them. We're going to let this next move go. In case you're wondering... Uh, as comparison, it has the same exact stat product as Knocked Owl. So it is, it is Knocked Owl bulk. Uh, for those of you that are very familiar with how bulky Knocked Owl is, uh, Mantine has the exact same bulk. So we're going to swap um, to bring Steelix in onto this Gligar. I'm reading that they're very weak to a Mantine in the back. Going to shield up the dig and try and get off a breaking swipe, but they are at another dig. Um, so that's okay. We're going to comfortably, well, not comfortably, but we're going to tank this and uh, it'll feel comfortable because we are resisting the fast move pressure, especially after getting off a breaking swipe. They do let that go and they've got a Medi in the back. So this is not looking good. Holy smokes. Shields are down. But again, guys, with a team as bulky as this one, you rarely need shields to perform at your best. And it also allows you to be very flexible with your shielding priorities. We go for an aerialist just in case they wanted to let the first one go. And with our bulk, we survive the neutral ice punch and we're going to debuff them and then put it all on Diggersby here. This should absolutely grab that final shield. It does. We've lowered the attack. They can still swap out, though, to clear that debuff. But we're going to try and get off a of Scorching Sands here and put in work with our Diggersby. This is a debuffed Ice Punch. Not going to be doing nearly as much damage, obviously. And we're going for the Scorching Sands here. Diggersby actually has a very close matchup against Metacham. And they do swap to clear that debuff. Oh, man. This Gligar is still very healthy. Uh, but the ch the quick attacks are slowly whittling away. They can only make it to an aerial ace, and we're going to have to overload here as much as we can, throw just before they get to another aerial ace. The fire punch will KO, and we are very close to a Scorching Sands. This one's coming down to the wire. We were one off from the Scorching Sands. Going to hit the Scorching Sands. I don't think it'll quite KO. So what we're going to look to do is go for the Simul KO. The super effective wing attack takes out the Medi and the Diggersby is still remaining. That was very close, but we came out on top in the end. Good game. Well played to them. 
Oh man, what an exciting finish to that last battle. That was a fun one. But here we go. Uh, Shadow A9 running charm. So, okay, this is this is okay. This is where Bubble Beam can come in a little bit clutch. Allows you to really take um, the sting off of these Shadow Charms with Stab. But again, like I mentioned in that previous battle, Mantine has the bulk to hang in there. And we will shield up the potential Weather Ball here. And now because we've debuffed it, we can now just go Aerial Ace here. I like to stay in a little bit because um, A9, the Charm A9 is not great for Steelix, although in the right circumstance, it can put in work up against it. So we're just going to stay in here a little bit. The problem with staying in is that there could absolutely be a Metacham in the back. So now we're going to pivot here after grabbing both of those shields. Mantine's got enough health to put in a little bit of work on a potential meta jam. So we swap into Diggersby. We tank that weather ball. It's not a meta jam in the back. It's a licky. So this is looking really good for us. I'm um, going to go for the Scorching Sands, of course. An attack drop would be nice. We do get it there. That's fantastic, especially given the fact that we did tank that super effective weather ball. Like a champ, I might add. Holy smokes. Uh, and uh, they're going to go for the power whip there. And we're going to go for yet another Scorching Sands here. And slowly but surely whittle away at the Licky Tongue. Not going to shield anything. We're going to put it all on Steelix to close the game strong for us. And uh, go for the Scorching Sands here. They're not going to allow us to get that off. They're going to go for a Body Slam here. I was hoping that even with the Attack Drop, maybe we could have survived that. But we do not. That's okay. And now it's Steelix time. So we're just going to... We should Dragon Tail this all the way down. Um... This is a questionable play, just getting rid of it, but I, my rationale at the time was we still have a shield, let's stay healthy, we don't know what's in the back. It's a Deoxys, so I'm glad we didn't tank the Power Whip, electing to just get rid of the Licky Tongue. Um, this is still pretty good for Steelix, much like with Galarian Stunfisk, um, DD has a very rough time up against the ground steel types as we are resisting all of their charge moves. They can swap out, so this should be a Psycho Boost, but it's not. It's a Thunderbolt, and they still swap out anyways. So that was very interesting to see. Just going to load up and try and force this A9 here to throw. They do throw, which is fantastic. Um, so now we can double resist it, farm down, I think, before they can charm us down. The DD is within EQ range. We've got the EQ loaded. They have no shields. Steelix doing Steelix things. We are saying bye-bye to the Deoxys. Courtesy of our closer, Steelix in the back. You'll love to see it. Good game. Well played to them. Some very exciting battles thus far with this ABB style team. You'd love to see it. Here we go. Another A9. So... In that previous one, we played it differently. I was experimenting with the best way to tackle this. This time, we don't throw with optimal timing. I think when shields are still up, that is much more forgiving. Um, so we throw right as we get to the bubble beam, and we will shield this uh, weather ball and go look to go straight aerial ace from here on out. Um, ideally, when you have a two-turn fast move up against the three-turn, you'll want to be throwing on one, four, seven, or ten. Um, so we're, we throw one and then the move here. We're back to proper timing. And they do let that go. So this strategy actually wasn't too bad for us either. Of course, it comes down to what they have in the back. We don't know. It could be a completely different team. It is. They've got... Um, I saw a ground flying. I'm assuming a Gligar. But no, it's a Shadow Gly score. Holy smokes. Okay. We'll take that. Uh, gonna go for these bubble beams here. Of course, they do hit for super effective. And Gly score, especially as a shadow, is way less bulky than Gligar. Already got it below 50% health. This thing is loaded, so we're coming in with Diggersby onto it. And they've got a Quagsire in the back. So we're actually forced to stay in here a little bit um, and whittle away at this Quagsire here. A healthy Steelix um, with a shield should be able to handle that Gliscor, no problem. The Dragon Tails are just far too oppressive for it, especially as a shadow. So we're fine to stay in here. And uh, they're just we're just going to absorb all this damage, preserve the shield for Steelix here. And um, go for another Scorching Sands here. An Attack Drop would be really nice here. Not sure what they're going to want to do. They do shield, so I like to aggressively pivot into Steelix here, get ahead on energy. The plan is to farm this thing all the way down. Um, we will survive a couple of mud bombs. This is not a shadow. 
uh, Quagsire here, and we are going to go for the full farm down and really load up on energy. So with a Glyce score, the moveset um, has Earthquake instead of Dig, so it takes them a little bit longer. I know that they did load up on our Mantine. Um, they could also be running Night Slash. That's generally what they do run, Night Slash Earthquake. And um, they are going to throw immediately, so we don't get to get off the move. And we elect to just uh, put the faith into Diggers B to close this. It's very close. We're going to have to just call a move. They are absolutely loaded. We're going to have to call this. And uh, we do call it. It's the aerial ace, and they go down. Sometimes you just have to dig your heels in and make a call, and that that worked out beautifully for us. We take that one in the end. Good game well played to them, and that is the team, my friends. So yeah, this team absolutely puts in work. You can you generally see Mantine with steals in the back. We do have a steal in the back, but I think the play is to back it up and support it with some ground type coverage. And one of our steel our steel type happens to have a ground typing, so that really protects it from its major obstacle being Lantern in this meta. If you can dodge lanterns, um, Mantine absolutely puts in work, as we saw in this video. Again, I wanted to support it with two very strong ground types for that added layer of lantern, or lantern protection, as well as protecting it from opposing steel types. So this team, um, just all the moving parts are working together and forming a very, very strong team. We saw evidence of that in this video. Diggers puts in work on the safe swaps. Steelix does those Steelix things as the closer in the back. You put all that together, that's a recipe for a lot of success and a lot of fun in the Great League. But guys, I had a blast. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, I thank you for watching and keep up the grind. Thank you, guys.